I know, I know, you're probably already typing a comment based on the title alone telling me what you think of Avatar and how it's just Pocahontas in space and how it's entirely unoriginal to the extent they even used the papyrus font for its title and called The Rock I'm not here to tell you that Avatar is an amazing film. I'm not here to rewrite history and pretend it's a secret masterpiece or that it's this incredible work of fiction. It's not. Avatar is fine. It's just fine. It's an entertaining and technically impressive film that did surprisingly well at the box office. But contrary to what film Twitter would have you believe, it did have a cultural impact, and revisiting it for the first time in years just confirmed for me that's also better than 90% of the blockbusters being made today. So to mark the imminent arrival of its long, long, long delayed sequel, let's take a look at James Cameron's Avatar. Because I think it's kind of a miracle that in the 21st century, Avatar is the only movie besides Frozen that was the biggest of its year and wasn't based on any sort of pre-existing IP. I think it's worth looking at why. And let's get some things out of the way up front. There are some pretty stupid things about this movie. Unobtainium probably being number one. Like there's on the nose and then there's calling your plot device Unobtainium. James Cameron could have called it literally anything but he went with the most face palm worthy option. So yeah, unobtainium, bad. <laughs> Next, the characters. Yeah, besides Sigourney Weaver, they're all entirely forgettable. You don't know their names and you never will. That's not a slight on the actors. All of the performances are fine and even great in some cases. They're all perfectly believable in their roles and they did their jobs well. But the characters did not jump off the screen unless you saw it in 3D. Jake, Sully and Ayatu who are not and never will be Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia. And to prove my point, this character character's name isn't Nayatu, it's Nautu. Did you notice? I bet you didn't. I bet you also didn't notice that I still didn't get her name right. So for understandable reasons, a lot of people point to this as evidence that Avatar had no cultural impact. Ask anyone on the street and they will all know Jack Sparrow, Harry Potter, Marty McFly, Frodo Baggins, Luke Skywalker, Indiana Jones, Peter Parker, Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark but they won't know the guy from Avatar. But the lack of memorable characters is not in and of itself evidence of a movie being bad or not having a cultural impact. Because I guarantee that you immediately recognize all of these characters and the movie they're from, even if you don't know their names. As a test of this, be honest and without cheating, can you honestly tell me the names of these characters? You know them, obviously, but what are their names? Go on, say this character's full name. I'd be surprised if you could, and if you can, I bet your friend who doesn't watch YouTube video essays about movies can't. But they can name Jack Sparrow. Let's get onto the story, and yeah, we've heard it all before. It's just Pocahontas in space. It's a classic story of an ignorant colonial invader being swept up by the peaceful, nature-loving natives and choosing to fight with them instead of against the evil marauding empire. But so what? Star Wars is a textbook hero's journey story where the farm boy meets a wise old wizard and a roguish scoundrel, saves the princess and defeats the dragon. That doesn't make it worse, in fact it's one of the reasons it was such a success. It took a familiar story structure and used it to guide the audiences through this new and unique world. Avatar does the same thing. I don't think you can genuinely argue that Avatar's story is any stronger, weaker or more predictable than say Pirates of the Caribbean or Raiders of the Lost Ark. Not every movie needs to have a plot like The Matrix or Inception and be totally unique. Sometimes movies just need to follow the rules that the good guys win and the bad guys lose, because that's what makes us feel good. Top Gun Maverick proved that sometimes all we want is just a big popcorn blockbuster that will give us a satisfying ending and an enjoyable movie experience. Because Avatar is a movie that understands it's about the journey, not the destination. The characters and story are simply a vehicle for us to have a bit of mindless escapism for two and a half hours while we experience the world of Pandora and relish in the technological wonder of filmmaking that this movie is. Because for all the justified criticisms you can level at this movie, you cannot fault how it looks and you cannot fault the incredible filmmaking innovations that brought it to life. You can take almost any frame of this movie and it still looks absolutely astounding. Because Avatar is an absolute visual feast in a way that a lot of modern blockbusters just aren't anymore. Whether or not you think it's a good movie, you can't argue with its aesthetics. But this does bring us, unfortunately, to 3D. My views on that have been well covered here so I'm not going to repeat myself, but in that video I do talk about Avatar and acknowledge that it is one of the few decent 3D movies because it was specifically designed from from the start to be shot that way. But a lot of the hype and success of Avatar at the time it was released was because people thought that this would be the future of movies. It wasn't, and I think this is part of the reason the movie gets a disproportionate amount of backlash because it was marketed as this absolutely game-changing revolution that turned out to be just another summer blockbuster. I think if it hadn't been for the 3D, this would have been remembered much more along the lines of movies like Terminator and Die Hard and Alien because audiences would have just focused on the experience of the movie and not the 3D hype. 3D is 
is also why I think it became such a massive commercial success. A decent number of people will have just gone to see it out of curiosity to see if 3D was all it was hyped up to be. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. But they still went to see it. In its first weekend worldwide, Avatar opened on 14,000 screens. 3D screens made up only 25% of that number, but were responsible for 56% of its opening weekend revenue. This trend continued throughout its theatrical run. So Avatar probably sold the same number of overall tickets as comparable blockbusters did, but it made more money because so many of those tickets were for 3D and IMAX showings. So Avatar's status as the highest grossing film of all time doesn't necessarily mean that it was more popular or more loved than, say, The Dark Knight or Harry Potter. It just made more money. But here's where I need to eat my hat a bit because in my 3D video essay I also said that Avatar didn't survive the move to home video in the way other iconic blockbusters have done because the story and characters weren't enough to compensate for the technological spectacle. Well now I have to do what people very rarely do on the internet and admit that I was wrong. Because the data does not back that claim up. Avatar sold over 4 million Blu-rays and DVDs on its first day and remained the top selling film on Blu-ray until Frozen came along in 2015. But that is just another metric in the argument that despite what the internet would have have you believe, Avatar did have a cultural impact. Maybe it never developed an ardent fanbase like Star Trek, The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars or Marvel did, and maybe the impact of its technological advancements was not as revolutionary as people thought it would be at the time it was released, but it did have an impact. Whether positive or negative or just ambivalent, Avatar made a lasting impression in audiences who still remember it to this day, even if they don't remember anyone's names. But chances are they can remember what it was like to watch it in the cinema for the first time. How many movies can you say that about? And above all of that, it is still something worth celebrating that one of the biggest movies of all time is this one-off sci-fi adventure movie that isn't a sequel, remake, or based on a pre-existing novel or comic. And if you don't count history as a pre-existing IP, then the only other time that has ever happened was Star Wars and E.T. But I would argue that if Star Wars had never had a sequel, it too would have faded from the public mind over time. But instead, through mass merchandising and its two sequels, it cemented itself as a pop culture icon. If Avatar sequels had come out in 2014 and 2015 as originally planned, then regardless of the quality of those movies, it would have been much more well remembered. So even though it is much, much delayed, I think The Way of the Water is going to defy expectations and probably even rival Top Gun at the box office for the highest grossing movie of the year. I may live to eat those words, but somehow I don't think so. If film history has taught us anything, it is not to underestimate James Cameron. Because regardless of how you feel about Avatar, I'm pretty confident you're still going to buy a ticket and go see the sequel. You might even buy a 3D ticket. If Way of the Water does as well as I suspect, then I think it will finally put to bed the idea that Avatar had no cultural impact. Because 13 years on, and with a sequel finally upon us, we are still talking about and debating the legacy of Avatar.